So it's my first day back working. Uh, school bus, you know, school's back in session, first day of school today. And picking up these people, coming to see these coworkers and everybody asking me about how's the summer, how's the summer, how's your family, how's your wife, how's your loved one, how's your other, how's your counterpart. There is no hate for them yet. I don't have hate. What came up today was that I do feel sorry for the fact that that's how she's living and is deciding to live and is choosing to live. It, it saddens me to know that, yeah, as much as there was real love and there was real care, I also know that at the end of it, I really didn't matter that much to her. And that the love wasn't as deep, real maybe, as I thought or I felt and experienced. And I'm also saddened by the memories that I thought maybe I was experiencing that now I realize maybe we're just, was just a mask. It was mirroring. I was falling in love with her, projecting and mirroring my own interest that made me fall in love with this soulmate almost that I thought. I was like, wow, so many things. This person also is on the same path, is also on the same thing. And now I'm looking back and I see as, as she has met people, as she meets people, she progresses into their habits and into their um, hobbies or interests as well. Whenever there was people that she dated while in our relationship, she completely ghosted and left me and put me to the side. And when that fell off or when that wasn't giving what it was giving, then she would come to me and I'd always be there. I'd always feel disrespected and a little bit less connected, but I'd still receive her with open arms until one point she started saying that I don't and that I reject her and that I don't. And no, there is gaslighting at the end, her trying to put a, real, uh, a realistic uh, or a reality onto me that was not a reality I was agreeing with and because I wasn't agreeing with it and I was saying the reality that I was living in or the reality that I was experiencing or even wanted. Like me saying, hey, I want to have this you know like we can go to group couples therapy and her just let me say like you're on a different reality i don't know what reality you're on you know and the confusion how many times she tried to put terms and labels onto me because she was trying to put me as crazy and i took it because i was so used to being called crazy or i've been so used to being called the outsider or the odd sheep that i didn't think much of it until it got to the point where i was like i don't think my partner should be calling me a shitty human i don't think my partner should be calling me a narcissist and grooming her children when 100 percent has not been the fact and not only did she say this to me, but she said this in front of the kids and used the kids as a weapon to make me feel bad and to shut up, to allow the abuse to happen because she said, because she knew I wouldn't do stuff in front of the kids. So she would react, burst up, go on me, blow flames once I needed to react, once I was crazy then she would go towards the kids so that the kids would see me crazy and this happened time and time again and every time she would tell me like what you're doing to the kids like what the kids are seeing look at how you're traumatizing the kids to the point that at one point you know 
it was like an obligation or some sort. I don't remember how it went down that I we couldn't move forward or we couldn't talk or I couldn't be around them until I had apologized to the kids and Delia in a group setting in front of everybody and to the point that where she felt it was enough, you know, so I could be saying sorry. I wrote a letter with the deepest of what I thought was wrong with me, you know, apologizing for the shitty parts of me that I thought were so bad. And at the end of it, that apology wasn't enough. And at the end of it, day after day, it was used as a, a as a, a weapon of some sort to devalue me and make me feel less worthy of being able to speak and use my voice, trying to put boundaries. And I got a point to where I try to put a boundary about sexual encounters with other people. And she would be mad. She would get mad at every boundary that I'd put. Thinking, and I thought it was me. I thought I was doing something wrong. I was asking too much. To the point where, she, where my boundaries for her, she felt controlled. And if I fe fucked up, two weeks ago or when I had fucked up she would use that as like hey you are you are really saying this do you really feel entitled and have a right to say this after what you just did really and it was this complete mind fuck of like oh my god why am I trying to assert boundaries why am I trying to assert my needs when I messed up I shouldn't and that was what I grew up with that is not right, but that is what I grew up with. So I got in this relationship and I took it for years and years and years because I felt there was something wrong with me. And at the end, she tried to turn it around to say that she was stuck with me for years and that she didn't know why she stayed with me. It was like everything that I was thinking and feeling like, how can I be in this relationship if there's abuse? She ended up saying it first, out loud. And it made me question myself, like, okay, she said it first out loud, I just thought it. Maybe I'm crazy and I'm actually creating this abuse and she's feeling it. Now I see what it's, what it, it's gaslighting. It's, it's projecting, it's the, what the narcissists do is they tell you what they're doing to make you shut up so that they think, so that you think it's you when it's really them doing this thing. The reactive abuse shit. It was ongoing all the time. And it was always used against me with the kids. And my gosh, I fell for that trap every time. <laughs> every fucking time I went crazy, my attachment wounds went off the roof. There was a time we were planning to go together to the zoo. I wasn't ready enough on time and she just didn't feel like waiting for three minutes, two minutes because I was in the bathroom and she didn't want to wait. She didn't want to communicate. She didn't want to tell me anything. She just packs up the kids and starts to drive away. When I come out and I'm like, what the fuck? And I call. She's like, well, you weren't ready. You should have been outside two minutes ago. You should have been outside three minutes ago. I, you weren't ready. You knew we were leaving. You didn't tell me you were going to the bathroom. You didn't tell me how long. I didn't know how long I was going to wait. And now that I hear, I'm like, I should have had better responses for that. What do you mean, how long to wait for the bathroom? Who asks and who does that to anyone? But I, re I took it. I took it and I felt like I did something wrong. And I took it like there was something wrong with me so much. <laughs> I'm calling and calling. She wouldn't pick up. I'm calling and calling. She picks up and she's like, what? The kids are, you're on speaker. What? Why are you crying? Stop crying. Look at how trauma, look at the scene that you're making. And at the end, it was me going crazy. At the end, it was, it was me going crazy. And my craziness was being told on me and said, look how you are crazy. You're a monster. She would call me a monster, a shitty human, an abuser. A narcissist and at the end she started saying that I was grooming her children because her children spoke up and even told her you make no sense 
you just said something and you took it back. You just said this and this and this. You you just did this and this. Like it makes no sense. And she got so mad that she blew up and was like, "How dare you talk to my kids and make them feel pity and and con like." Telling the kids, don't feel pity for Michael. He did this to himself. He did this all to him. Like, the face that she had was a complete different person I've never seen before. It was like a mask literally came off. And I realized I didn't have a friend. I realized I didn't have my lover. I realized I didn't have... The partner or wife I thought I did. <laughs> and if it wasn't because Kayla came up to me that day. Saw how crazy it was. Said it was not fair. <laughs> told me this is not fair. She's not being fair. <laughs> Her anger really hurts people. Her anger is out of control. Kayla saying that when she's when Delia's angry at Kayla, Kayla feels that she's ashamed and embarrassed of her. That she feels scared because she attacks with her words. And I had to tell Kayla, Kayla, you are not crazy because I feel the same way sometimes with your mom. And I have no idea what to do. And I have no idea how to move forward with this I wish I knew how to tell you but I don't even know and I'm in it with you too and Kayla saying yeah I know I see I see how when you try to defend me your mama gets mad at you then it was getting mad at me for defending Kayla and you know what I'll take the heat I take it over and over trust me I would but still for Kayla to be aware do Kayla tell me, hey daddy, why don't you just go to the patio? That way you give mama some space and she has some space in the house. For Kayla to know, go outside daddy. When we're sitting down and she's telling me, hey, mama's a bully. And bullies bully because they're insecure. When Kayla said, daddy, you don't deserve this. We don't deserve this. This isn't fair for us. I realized I could not be in that relationship anymore. I was not gonna let Kayla see that I knew what abuse was happening, how I felt, or Kayla, or Kayla feel abuse, emotional, mental, verbal abuse. And me stay and, and, and know that Kayla knows that this is what's going on to me and I'm in this relationship. I told her, Kayla knows I love her mom and Kayla knows I love them. And she also knows that I couldn't stay in there because it was hard and it was unhealthy and it was painful. And it was so mind fucking. So disrespectful. There was a point where Delia was so mad at me. And I was like, Delia, respect me. Why aren't you respecting me? And her answer was like, you want respect for doing nothing? You want respect for doing nothing? Yes. I want respect for just existing. Yes. And that is not too much for ask. That is not too much to ask. Being valued and respected because, just because not needing to earn it. And the thing is, for seven, eight years, I never earned it. But I gave and tried and did everything I could. I bent myself backwards, <laughs> like that saying, trying to please Delia. I'm not saying this as a talking shitty about Delia. I'm just saying this as real talk. Like, this is what the fuck I put myself in through. This is what trauma does. This is what trauma does. 
This is what trauma bonding does. This is what living under a narcissist lives, works, lives, and is like. <sighs> so here we are at work, and they're asking me about you, asking me about my partner. And I had you say, she disappeared. She just vanished. <laughs>